Shahanero. Irishmen and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generation from which she receives her own tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army have patiently perfected her discipline. Having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment. And supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying on the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies, to be sovereign and independent. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign independent state, and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irishman and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity, or refinement. In this supreme hour, the nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children, to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. This is signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, P. E. H. Pierce, Eamon Count, James Connolly, and Joseph. For a few quite a close fought match. Um, it's, it's great to be here in Longford. Uh, it's always great to come back to where my roots lie and to see relations, Louis and others from uh, Longford. Um, it's, a, it's a great day that you've put on here, uh, Thank you. Brendan, and uh, you're the speaking County Board. the Longford <laughs> County Board and, and all your, your colleagues. And uh, you're to be congratulated on it uh, in, the, in this centenary year. Um, as, as Brendan said, my grandfather came from Rathcline, just near Lanesborough. He won a scholarship to London and, and had secondary education there. 
and he became friendly with people like Michael Collins, Sam McGuire uh, in London. And depending on, on, on which version you read, it was either my grandfather or Sam McGuire who inducted Michael Collins into the IRB, the Irish Republican Brotherhood. Um, but they became very close together and Patrick provided a safe house for Michael Collins on more than one occasion in Dublin when Collins came back in early 1916 uh, to take part in the Rising. Um, I don't know if it's typical of Longford people, but I, the characteristics my grandfather would have been most known for were his hard work, his uncompromising nature, and his patriotism. Um, I guess those are typical Longford qualities, mm -hmm. but um, uh, certainly uh, my grandfather was known for all of the above. Um, in London, he was president of the Geraldine's GAA club. He was involved in Sinn Féin in London. Back in Dublin, he, as Brendan said, he was involved in the 1916 Rising and the fight for independence. And he was unlucky enough to serve six months hard labour in Mountjoy and Belfast for his troubles in 1918-1919. Um, as, as a public representative, indeed, as, as, as Brendan has said, it's interesting in these days when Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are, are in, 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 in talks to get together in some shape or form. My, my, grandfather, my grandfather, I think, uniquely served as a TD for Fianna Fáil initially in 1927, subsequently with Gael and later Fianna Gael. Probably the only person to do that. And there's a long history involved which I won't bore you with. <laughs> but uh, in, in 1927 he fell out with de Valera because after the assassination of Kevin O'Higgins, the Cosgrave government introduced a public order bill which my grandfather disagreed with and wanted to debate against. In those days, Fianna Fáil were abstentionists and wouldn't take the oath of allegiance to debate matters in the Doyle. But my, fa my grandfather broke with that and was evicted from the Fianna Fáil party. Two weeks later, de Valera led all his colleagues in and took the oath of allegiance. So timing is everything, I think. So uh, he was also famous, or infamous depending on your point of view, in supporting the nationalist side in the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s. And he was always a strong proponent of agricultural interests during the economic war in the 30s and afterwards. But he, uh, he was always very close to Longford and uh, worked for to try to get Longford people elected, or whichever party he happened to be involved with at any given time and was always a Longford man at heart. So it's, as I said, it gives me great pleasure. It's an honor to be asked to do this. And thank you very much again. He was born into a, in the historic years of 1884. The year the GA was founded. After leaving school, he went to London, where he. You're ready, you're going to very bad, can't you? <laughs> and, and he worked, he worked in, in, the, in the early 1900s. He was a member and later an officer of the Geraldine GA Club in London. He was a, a close, close associate of Michael Collins and Sam McGuire, and you all know who they are and who were also in the Geraldine Club in, in London. Patrick was working in the Land Commission in Dublin when the Rising took place. He served in the GPO during the Easter week and later in the week he joined Tom, the Tom Ash movement in Ashburn. After the Rising he was investigated but managed somehow to get away with his activities. Patrick Baker served as a TD in many of his, uh, in many of his, actually, which surprised me, and I, I brought it to Lewis G's attention. He was in Fianna Gael, and imagine he joined Fianna Fáil. You know, and that was, and maybe that's just going back to that now between Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil. Uh, <laughs> 
many, many is of many of his descendants, including Lewis Day and Avril Day, followed in his footsteps. So, now what I have to do now, please, uh, Jimmy Fox, would you come and read the proclamation and unveil Patrick Pierce's black? And thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Are we all good to have done? This is more than not more done, sir. A proclamation, Shahanero. Irishmen and Irishwomen, in the name of God and of the dead generation from which she receives her own tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army have patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself. She now seizes that moment, and supported by her exiled children in America, and by Gatton. Thank, thank you very much. Are we all good to have This is more than not poor Dulce and Proclam Nation Shahanero. Irishmen and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generation from which she receives her own tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army have patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself. She now seizes that moment, and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered <coughs> control of Irish destinies, to be sovereign and in the pit. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right nor can it ever be extinguished, except by the destruction of Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms, standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign independent state, and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irishman and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people of Ireland, and elected by the suffrages of all her men. We are gathered here today to honour two of those brave people, Murray Pierce and Patrick Benton. We have always been very proud in Longford of our county grounds were named after Murray Pierce. Murray Pierce, who read that proclamation on that historic occasion, and the 24th of April 1916 is an inspiration to the people of all over the world. So our president, Jimmy Fox, will be bringing it back to us here in a few minutes. The other man is one of our own, Patrick 
Bolton, and there's a vote for us by Ian He was born into a, in the historic years of 1884, the year the GA was founded. After leaving school, he went to London, where he... You ready? You're going to very bad, can't you? <laughs> and, and he worked, he worked in the, in the, in the early 1900s. He was a member and later an officer of the Geraldine GA Club in London. He was a, a close, close associate of Michael Collins and Sam McGuire, and you all know who they are, and who were also in the Geraldine Club in, in London. Patrick was working in the Land Commission in Dublin when the rising took place. He served in the GPO during the Easter week and later in the week he joined Tom, the Tom Ash movement in Ashburn. After the rising he was investigated but managed somehow to get away with his activities. Patrick later served as a TD in many of his uh, in many of his actually, which surprised me, and I, I brought it to Lewis to his attention, he was in Fine Gael, and imagine he joined Fianna of all. You know, and that was, and maybe that's just going back to that now between Fianna Gael and Fianna of all. Uh, <laughs> he did many, many of his, many of his descendants, including Lewis Day and Avril Day, followed in his footsteps. So, all I have to do now, please, uh, Jimmy Fox, would you come and read the proclamation and unveil Patrick Pierce's work. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Are we all good to end up? This is more than not more good, sir. The proclamation, Shahanero. Irishmen and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generation from which she receives 